Hello everyone, my name's Tris and this is Double O'Neill. I want to show you a loco body that I've been designing up and I've had a lot of fun doing it. I've put lots of rivet detail on there and it's going to fit the 040 chassis that Hornby produce. Lots of you have them out there and I decided to make a body for my 040s but you'll be able to buy one yourself. I've based this on like a prairie kind of look and I've had a bit of help from my dad as well pointing out a couple of details I can add I've had, and I've had a lot of fun doing it. I print it out and it goes on these spots of printing to add an angle so I can try and get the detail in and it came out really really nicely. All you have to do once it's like this is you trim it off. I'm going to be selling these, there'll be more information about them at the end of the episode but when you get yours I would have trimmed it off already just so I know that everything is nice and ready to go. After that you will need to file it um, using a file, clean up all that area, wear gloves wear a mask the resin dust isn't good for you uh, not many dusts are <laughs> and so it's always good to take care of yourself after i've sanded this my next plan was to use an acrylic primer i used some vallejo primer that i've been using for this while now it's nice because you can put it on in a couple of coats and you don't lose all your detail whereas when i use my um, spray cans let's say uh, you know, any brand from a car spray shop I find that I lose detail. I don't always get the, the finish that I want. It's always important to, again, take your time with these things. On the video it looks like I'm rushing through, but this has been edited and I'm kind of we go in over areas. Once it's done, let it dry, let it go hard. And then I use my great western green colour. Again, this is one that I've used on previous videos where I've mixed a bit of malachite green in it starts a bit brighter and actually when you start spraying it on or painting it on it's much brighter it's rail match and um, these colors um, but after you've done a few coats it starts getting to the color that you're after and really comes out well um, obviously when it's wet it always looks like a different color uh, well, slightly different color anyway and obviously it goes quite dark once it's dry after this is done I just get the black out really you know you've got the um, it's just a, a black Vallejo paint and as work all the areas I thin the paint down with actually my airflow improver it's quite a nice thing to thin the paint down because um, it's actually got a bit thick over time anyway and that just kind of goes on and I do a couple of coats because it goes on so thinly you keep all the rivet detail but it's slightly opaque so then you do another coat and then it goes on nicely so my red goes on slightly pinky but the more coats I put on the better it gets but I get to keep all of my detail so do more than one coat don't try and plaster all on with one because you're rushing to get it done just take your time just get that paintbrush in there and just work those areas that you need to until it gets richer and richer to the color that you want and then you can stop it's yeah one thing that I try and do a lot is just take my time with everything the black bits on top of the um, tanks actually took a bit longer than I thought they would actually because um, you're just going to be careful not to touch the part of the boiler uh, that is next to you. After that I use some of my metal colours and this is a copper one for my chimney and it's got a nice shine to it when it goes on. Um, it's it's a lovely little um, option that you can have a painter out there and after that you can even use some gloss varnish to make it even brighter then I use gold by Vallejo as well it's there again in their metal colour range um, and I just use that to represent the brass and I think it looks nice I don't bother putting any brass bits on I just go straight for the gold because I think they look nice and then there's the trim around the windows and honestly it's, that's one of my favourite bits though very tricky to paint on I came in later on and touched it up with the green I'm happy with how it looks I don't think I'll add too much more in regards to the paint colorings I think after this if you did want to do a bit more you could spend some time weathering it and getting it nice but we need to put the transfers on next really that's the key bit here so what I'm going to use are ones from this is my press fix uh, transfers and they come off the back with water on these they do some meth fix ones as well it's by HMRS um, transfers been using these for quite a while now my dad got me onto them really and you pick them off you lay them on the area that you want it to be you rub it with your finger 
and that basically holds it in place and then to remove the backing off it afterwards you simply get a paintbrush well I use a paintbrush you dip it into some water and then you touch it on the top of the paper that's holding it in place and what happens is the water soaks into it and then it releases from the wonderful transfer that's there and yep as you'll see here it kind of dissolves into the worm you know the water and that obviously it, it soaks in so more than dissolves and i get very carefully with my tweezers once it's obviously softened i then lift off the bit of paper that's on there and that's it it's very very simple and then you repeat for the other side see i've just dabbed a bit off of the of the water off but i'm sure you could leave it just to dry anyway if you're unhappy with it i guess you could very carefully try and peel this off but for me I, could have, I was quite happy with how I did it when I first did some ages ago on some early locos and bits I worked on and sometimes mess it up but on this one it came out really really nicely um, and on the end plates I put 1200 on there because this is going to be a 12XX which is something I'm happy about once these are done though I do put some varnish on them directly with a paintbrush let them dry um, otherwise I found that they do peel back slightly once this is done, I'm going to do a coat of varnish over the top of satin coat and I brush it off first just to make sure that it's it's clean because you see any bits of fluff on there when you put the matte varnish on or whatever varnish you put on, you're going to have some trouble with bits of fluff just being there forever after that. So I use my satin varnish again by Vallejo. I water it down quite a lot. It's kind of like 50-50 with um, my airflow improver just so I can do some thin coats twice. I don't want to go and lose all my details again as it creates kind of these glossy, puddly coats over each little rivet. I want to keep it looking nice. And it richens everything up and, I don't know, starts giving it a really, really good look. And I'm really proud proud of it. Really pleased. That was the word I was going for. And, yeah, this is going to be more of a pristine example. Um, I will be doing some other liveries um, and making them look all dirty and weathered um, but for this one what I'm going to do I'm going to add my coal into the back um, which is always a nice feature you can have these locos obviously when you buy your one of this which I said it's going to be on my website which features at the end of the episode um, you'll have to put your own load in the back and I just get my bit of coal I drop it in there and actually once the coal's in there I always try to make sure the the size of the coal looks nice I don't go too big um, if there are ones that look a bit too big I take them out then I use osopropanol alcohol and I drop that in um, and what that does is it allows the watered down PVA glue to wick in nicely and then hold the uh, coal in nicely one bit that I need to do now is paint up these cylinder covers and the cylinder covers are just to change the look of the Hornby one so from the quick glance, you won't realise that it's on a Hornby chassis, you know, kind of look a bit more special um, than what you had before, hopefully. Um, and they've even got little drain cocks on them. If you want, you could cut one side of the drain cock off, so then it's pointing a direction. I've left them on. It's kind of like just to represent drain cocks on this. They're like, not handed, so you put them on either side. It doesn't matter. And they just slide over. And if you want, you can glue them in place. And that'll be it. Um, this... Uh, body's been designed around the modern Hornby chassis. The old chassis, I believe, should fit. Uh, it's not something that I've tested too much, um, but I've run it on a number of different uh, modern ones that I've had. And when I say modern, ones that are probably 10, 12, you know, 15 years old even. Um, but I've got some from my childhood that I, uh, I've, I've had a little play of fitting, and it, it appears to fit on them. Um, yeah, so now we're painting up the men. Um, I just clean them up with a knife just to make sure there's no flash on them. I give them a white primer and then I start painting them. I go for a light blue on the jacket to begin with. Um, and that's because it's been a highly washed jacket and I'm going to be putting a wash on it later, which will darken things up. Even though you won't see it, I paint the trousers. <laughs> I think, why not? Um, it's them, there's something nice about doing it. Then I paint the hats, um, and they'll eventually be glossy hats. Uh, it's been, I've been critiqued on my videos to have it explained that the hats would have been a shiny hat, um, and obviously the clothes would have been dirty. After this, I put on, I use Goodman Flesh, which is by Citadel, and um, it's this kind of wash that goes in. It gives it kind of a nice look as a, a skin tone that's on there anyway so i'm pretty happy with how that goes after that i paint the hair on um i've gone for like a grayish brownish color 
Um, and yeah, nice and simple, and it's peaceful. After that, I use my kind of dark, um, kind of dark black wash, I think it was in this, and I just kind of pick out details and make it so when you see the model, you can see that there's someone inside and he's wearing a jacket and he's quite dirty. And you just work your way around. I covered it all over the trousers because they're going to be darker because they're going to get really, really dirty during their train ride. Um, and yeah, as they're working away, that's how they look. So I'm pretty happy with them. I'm going to drop them inside and you'll probably just see their heads in an arm. <laughs> and that'd be it. But I know that I've had fun painting up these lovely loco well, drivers and firemen. After that, I just use some rocket glue. I stick them inside. I was going to film exactly how I stuck them in, but it was quite difficult to get that on camera. But I just used tweezers, brought them around, and I stuck them in. And they look great. Really happy with them. And that guy looks like he's waving. To fit the body onto the chassis, you've got the option of the metal mounts that come in some of the chassis and that hooks in there. You can remove it and just use the bit that's on the chassis, the plastic moulding that's part of the chassis. There's a hook and you hook that the, or the body onto that. Just be careful, don't go breaking the body doing it. You might choose not to use that one and use the back hook, in which case you'll need to do some dremeling, not well, dremeling, but you know, remove um, some of the material. Then there's a front hook here which goes in afterwards, so you clip that on as you would have taken off the old body. Um, if not, you'll have to work out a different way to hold it down, but that's the best that I could do. So yeah, hopefully you have a, no trouble with that. But with it together, I think it's looking great, but it needs these cylinder covers to go on and they kind of really transform the look. They quite look quite meaty, like on the prairie. It's got that large cylinder area on there. And so I just put a little bit of glue on and it holds them in place. But what I need to do is give it some distinction and it needs its number. And so I use my gold paint by Vallejo, it's part of their metal colours, and I work that into the areas and try not to lose too much detail. So I kind of work the paintbrush around it and kind of get rid of the extra paint that's on the brush. After that, you go through the fun stage of painting in the black. And it's a little bit tricky, but using a small brush, careful hand, and taking your time, you can get it in there. Anything that kind of goes over the edges, you just use your finger and rub it away because the metal paint is kind of slippery. So you can get away with actually doing what I feel is a nice job. The Because of the printing, the O's are quite close together. So I kind of use a little line there to sort it out. I then clip them off. It doesn't take much. You could just twist them off and break them off, but I try and be gentle with it so then I can get a nice result. And then I use some again, my rocket glue, and this basically glues on instantly when you put it on. So you have to really make sure it's sitting correctly because it's very, very good stuff, especially with 3D printed material and paint. Um, so I just make sure it's in the right position. And that's it. You don't have too much drying time. Um, it was a bit futile here. I was kind of thinking, oh, is this straight? But it was pretty good. And then I stick it on the other side. Again, nice and nice and easy. Trying to be careful not to damage the details on the locos. Again, all these details are printed on. So be careful with them. It's not like we've got bits of metal on there. So that's that. So I'm really happy with this loco. I think it looks fantastic. I'm really happy because I spent a lot of time drawing this up. And I've had a lot of people very interested in buying it from me, uh, which is going to be available that you'll see in a few minutes on my new website. But look at that run. I've seen slightly out of focus there at points, but it's looking beautiful as it goes past. I've got that on my new test track. And I want to do more like this. I have got some books which have got some locos in from the Great Western where they absorbed old engines. And my thoughts are that. I should do some more like that and, you know, cover the real ones, find chassis for them to fit. But this, for me, it's a 12XX. It's a baby prairie. I know it doesn't have the wheel configuration, but it looks really, really nice. There's something about it with the modern Hornby chassis that run so smooth with those large cylinders on it. I'm just well, chuffed to bits of it. I'd like to say a big thank you, though, to my channel supporters through Patreon and the channel members. I've been getting support from you guys that pushes me on and yeah honestly thank you so much it allows me to get on with projects like this and try and bring them out to well, show the world really if you'd like to become a patron or a channel member the links are in below you can check out patreon and find O'Neill on there if not hit the join button that's on the channel if you don't want to do that 
but you really like the channel and you like what I do, then why don't you hit subscribe? You know, it doesn't cost you anything and you can catch everything that I release each month. Or each month or each, every other week, let's say, you know, whenever I'm doing it. Anyway, let's take a little look at the production squad. I've got bodies ready. If you do want one, please get in touch through the website. The website is www.ooneildesigns.com. And a recent website you'll see here. I'll just scroll down. You can have a little look here. I've got some other bits on there which will be in stock at some point. And you'll be able to get hold of this loco. I've priced it at £30. It takes me a bit of time to do this. And it'd be something that hopefully you enjoy having on your layout. And please send me pictures of yours that are done. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please take care. And I will see you soon. Bye-bye.